what it takes to live your dream. Mankind has always dreamt, and that is why we have evolved to become explorers. And man, and mankind has explored and conquered the sea, the land, the air, and now the final frontier, space. Growing up, I too dreamt of exploring our universe. I grew in Uti, where the night sky is way brighter than what it is here. So I used to gaze at the night sky every day and I could see a world of wonder waiting for me. When I was young, my sister was my inspiration. She was the one who inspired me to take physics, learn more about universe. And it was not very hard for her to do that because I was someone who used to tune into Doordarshan at crazy hours to watch, watch the ISRO launches. For the young ones out there, I know, I hope you all know what Doordarshan is. Moon. Moon is the brightest object in the night sky. Moon is, of course, our closest celestial body. The ancient Greek worshipped the moon as a goddess. We Indians have a lot of festivals based on moon. Mankind was fascinated about moon since we first walked off the earth. Mankind had the aspiration to reach the moon. And with Apollo 11 and the iconic words of Neil Armstrong, which we cannot forget, one small step for man and a giant leap for mankind moon became a reality. But after that, we have never been to the moon. Today, I am part of Team Indus, which is once again going to bring moon closer to humans. So what do I do? I am part of Team Indus, which is intending to build and land a spacecraft on moon by the end of next year. The question comes, why are we doing it? Our mission is to plant the Indian tricolor on moon and win the Google Lunar X Prize. We are the only participant in this Indian participant in this competition, which has put forth two point problem statements to the teams across the world. Firstly, build and land a spacecraft on moon by the end of 2017, and then traverse for 500 meters, send back high definition images back to Earth. And secondly, the most importantly, all of this has to be done, being 90% privately funded. So when I first heard about Team Indus, I was completely floored and captivated by what they're trying to achieve. It's a big dream. Today, after joining Team Indus and after seeing how far we've come, I can tell you with a lot of confidence that we are going to be the first private individuals to land on moon. The competition started off with uh, 30 teams and currently there are 16 teams competing in this competition and we are among one of the top three teams. When we started off, we were four to five enthusiasts, and currently we are a hundred persons team. And we are very privileged to have more than two dozen of ex ISRO scientists who believe in us and who are very, work, working very closely with us. So, why is going back to the moon? And why is building the technology such a big deal? A quick question here. How many countries do you think have landed on the moon before? When I ask this question to people, I get answers like 9 countries, 12 countries, or more. Not. Actually, only 3 countries have done it before. Russia and USA did it long back in 1960s and 70s, and China did it recently in 2013. So when I talk about all this, people also ask me, why is it important for me personally? I had mentioned, I had passion for space even before joining people pursued my education in control systems and I did my master's thesis, thesis at ISRO Satellite Center. And when I heard about an Indian team attempting to go into the moon, I realized that was my dream calling. I joined Team Indus in 2014, thereby I am continuing my crazy dream on this journey. Let me show you what we have been working on. always been geeky and I've always been better with numbers than words. This part of the presentation is going to be the easiest present part for me. This will give you the enormity of mission what we are attempting to do. 
PSLV will launch our space, uh, spacecraft from Sriharikota. So the mass of our spacecraft will be 300, uh, 600 kgs when during launch and only 210 kgs after its landing with barely 2 to 3 kgs of fuel left. So our spacecraft will be launched into a lower earth orbit. We, we take 4 orbits around the earth and then we do a translunar injection which let ourselves escape from the Earth's gravity and get captured around the moon. So once we get close to the moon, we reduce the size of our orbits in multiple steps and we park ourselves on a 100 by 100 kilometer parking orbit. And we wait there for the right moment to be begin our landing. Landing is the most crucial part of our mission. That's why only three countries have done it before. And this landing has to be completely autonomous while being able to select the sites and avoid the hazards. To give you an idea of the environment there, it's extremely harsh, it's unforgiving. The temperatures for our mission will vary from minus 269 degrees Celsius to plus 150 degrees Celsius. That's like frying and piecing object at the same time. So our designs, we have designed in such a way to take care of all, all of these. So once we get close to the moon and when we land, after we land, a ramp opens and our rover rolls onto the lunar surface. Being a rover on the moon is pretty hard. So the soil there is like ash. It will stick to everything from the cameras to the mechanism to the electrical systems. So the design is well thought of. And the wheels and protrusions, what you see here, are designed after a number of analyses and tests. So this rover will take 500 meters and then win us the Google Lunar X Prize. So this would take us around four to five days to complete the journey. Going back to 2014, when we were still a very small team, GLXP, the organizers of this competition, instituted a milestone prize to check the technological capabilities of the teams. So they were world-renowned judges who came and witnessed our uh, testing for landing. So this video is one of our tests at NAL, we subjected our spacecraft to numerous tests and we won the $1 million as a milestone prize. So our mission was always designed to be open, collaborative and educational. It's part of our charter to demystify space as far as possible and bring it closer to humans. The very fact that we are ordinary people trying something so huge out there hopefully would inspire a whole lot of Indians and change the percep perception of what is possible from India. And we believe that developing this technology will go a long way and help solve problems on Earth. Be it weather monitoring, or remote sensing, or streaming of internet from drones, there are a whole host of problems that needs to be solved to make Earth on a life on Earth easy and better. Here, I would like to quote one of Carl Sagan's quote. Exploration is in our nature. We began as wanderers and we are wanderers still. We have lingered long enough on the shores of cosmic ocean. We are ready at last to set sail for the stars. And set sail for the stars is what we are trying to do. Paving a way for a whole new journey for mankind. All this is possible by following our dreams. Imagine the inspiration one gets by following our dreams and making it happen. Imagine when, when we look up the night sky, when we see the moon, where something we have made has reached. Imagine the impact of the world around us. This is the story of our moonshot. It's really all of our mission and I would love it if you were to join us, make our mission into yours and call it your own. Thank you.